In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Okay, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we're on uh, volume 23, 10, 23, 1927. The kingdom of my divine will is of unreachable height and nobility. Okay. Fallen human nature can't reach this. That's why Jesus came to earth and redeemed us. Uh, Our Lady co-redeemed uh, with Christ on, on Calvary. Okay, so that's what we have to understand. This is human sanctity cannot reach this. Uh, and again, that's doing the will of God. That's human sanctity. Uh, that's what the saints have all gone through. Once they get into the kingdom, they're in the kingdom of the divine will. But on earth, to enter into this gift, Jesus has to do it. That's why we go to Louisa. It's Jesus that's living in Louisa. It's the Blessed Mother that's living in Louisa. That's why Jesus and Mary call her the firstborn, the newborn of the divine will. So, the kingdom of my divine will is unreachable height the nobility. The soul is constituted queen. And do you know what the soul uh, is made queen of? This is what we're called to be. Queen of sanctity, of love, of beauty, of light, of goodness, of great. In, in some, queen of the divine life and all of its divine qualities. Now, this is the thing that's, that um, Jesus wants us to begin to understand. And this is step six of the, the six steps to uh, receive all the divine qualities as much as possible that a human could possibly possess. That's how we're supposed to be living. Not being good and holy and saintly. That's, that's volume one through volume ten, is how to become a divine mirror of Jesus. How to become good and holy and saintly. Volume 11 through volume 19 is how to live in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit. This hasn't happened. This, this, is, this is what's coming. And, and little by little, we're learning it, to live in the divine will. But to live fully in the divine will, nobody possesses it at this point. That's to be without sin. You know, we could go back to where Jesus is. Those without sin can cast the first stone. It's, you know, it's only Jesus and Mary at this point. Louisa lived, Louisa possesses, she's the newborn. And then finally, 
to receive the divine the divine qualities. It's to volume 20 through volume 36. How to receive the divine inheritance of the Father. That's what's coming. The, the inheritance, the divine inheritance of the Father. Say, Honorable de France, he had never even read that. He was Luis's confessor, director, basically. And what did he, what did he, he read maybe volume 20 through volume 30, 20 through volume 23, uh, maybe 25, she, well, before he died, okay? And Luisa was still writing until 1938. So Jesus is saying to us, I, I want you to understand that we're calling you to be the queen uh, of divine life, of all the divine qualities of God. Not to be God, but to be like God, image and likeness. And that's what he's offering to us. So, in breathing over Adam, this rule of God, this breath of God that we can go to right now in our prayer, we can go to the Garden of Eden and we can breathe that, that breath that God breathed into Adam. We, Triune God, poured everything into Adam. And in blowing, breathing into Adam, we placed our supreme being in communication with Adam. Here's the word in such a way as to render Adam inseparable from God. This act of ours never ceased, because if the creation of the whole universe, it was our divine will that constituted itself life of everything. In Adam, we gave not only our fiat, but together with our breath, we gave Adam our very, divine, our very life, the life of God to Adam. And this breath of ours has not yet ceased. This 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 breath of God is coming again in a very powerful way to breathe this abundant life into all creation. It's going to make the first Pentecost look like a drop in the bucket compared to what's coming. Think about it. With that first Pentecost, 1 billion people became Catholic. 6 billion didn't. What's coming? Everyone will be Catholic. That's what Jesus says in volume, 20, volume 24. Everyone will be Catholic. First the Jews, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims, the Protestants. Everyone will want to be a baptized Catholic. And then there will be one church, one flock, one shepherd. That's what's coming. And it's not going to be many religions. There is one religion. There is one faith. There is one baptism. Wait till you see what's coming. It's, you, 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 you will not recognize the church because the church is going to be purified. The church is going to be the beautiful bride of Christ in his reflection, not in the human reflection. What's coming is magnificent. So he says this, This breath of ours has not yet ceased and has constituted the general generation of all creatures to render all mankind inseparable from us, triune God. Vine 24, 9, 16, 19, 28. My divine will with its light and heat shall repeat the prodigy of removing the bad humors that the human seed possesses. In order to be sure, it shall place the seed of divine light, divine heat, and shall constitute itself divine life of that seed. See, I was talking about the, the, the DNA. Everything's going to change. The spiritual DNA uh, of Jesus and Mary uh, is what God is offering to us. If we wish, if we want this life, so they shall exchange possession. My divine will shall take possession of the seed in order to form its life of light, of heat, of sanctity. And the creature shall return to take new possession of the kingdom of my divine fiat. We're going back to the Garden of Eden. Everything's going to be everything's going to be perfect. We're going to go back to where we were called to live. Not not. I look at Earth as a um, um, a bus station. Uh, I used to travel by bus when I was younger, and bus stations are not the most pleasant places in the world. You would always smell the latrine. You would always, you know, it was it was very uncomfortable back in the 50s and the 60s. 
now God is saying the the train, the bus, the boat, the ship is coming to take you to heaven. Are you ready? The kingdom is coming. Are you ready to board that train? Are you ready to, uh, are, are you in the state of grace? Are you ready for the kingdom? That's what Jesus is saying with these writings. 925, 1, 1, 19, 29. I knew no matter of how many goods I might give to God. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I know of no matter of how many goods I gave to Adam. Man would never have been happy, nor would he have possessed the fullness of goods and of sanctity or have the insignia of his creation that constitutes him king and dominator. He is always the manservant. He is weak. He is miserable. That's where we are because of our fallen nature. Adam was the king. Eve was the queen to be. And Adam, when he fell, all of us lost it. Right now, the weather comes against us. Animals come against us. That was never part of God's plan. We're the ones out of order. And all of nature is upset with us. And the more sin goes on, the more the, the weather is going to be worse. And it's funny, you know, save the earth. No, get in the state of grace and the earth will treat you with kindness. Save the earth. We're here to give our souls to Jesus to save us, to redeem us, and now to sanctify us. But my divine will, by making it rain in their midst, would give back to man in one single stroke of fortune. This is that day that's coming. All the goods and his royal palace and his lost dominion. It's coming. Get ready. Be in the state of grace. Read the volumes continuously. Let Jesus teach you of what is going to happen. It's glorious. It's nothing to be afraid of. You don't have to, you know, find a cave uh, to go to. Jesus is going to take care of you. Either he's your Lord, your King, your Master, your Savior, or he's not. And if he is, he's going to take care of you. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to fear. And that's what the evil one is trying to do. I mean, everybody agitated. Oh, what about this? Oh, what about that? You're wearing your mask? I mean, come on. God is in charge. Our Lord, lo our Lord loves us. And he's going to take care of us. I mean, there, there will be plagues. That's what scripture says. There will be earthquakes. There will be floods. But it's nothing to panic about. God is in charge. And if we're with God, everything, everything takes, takes priority in our life, one with God and the holy divine will. Not, nothing, nothing to worry about. If you, if you can't surrender your family to God, who is going to surrender your family to God for? And they're not going to do it. If you don't do it, who's going to do it? If you're worried, it says to Jesus, I don't trust you. You're not a good God. I have to worry about this. It's insulting to God. God is in charge. And this is what he's asking. Would you let me give back to you in one single, single stroke of fortune all the goods of this royal palace of God? I'm going to return to you your lost dominion of the earth. It's God that's going to do this. 5, 26, 7, 14, 19, And so... This is why my most holy divine will, wanting to form its divine life in you, wants to be free. It wants absolute freedom. And with its incessant acts uh, that it possesses by nature, it pours itself over the soul, extending with it more than maternal wings of, of divine light, and invests each fiber of the heart, each heartbeat, each breath, each thought, each word, each work, each step, and it warms it. And with its kiss of light, it impresses its life in each act of the soul. Come, divine will, breathe in my breathing, beat in my heart beating, dance in my dancing, sing in my singing. Come, divine will, reign in me. God goes, good. Watch what I will do. And while destroying the human life, it constitutes its very self as divine life within the soul. 
And since nothing but tenorous acts can come out of the human will, my divine will does not want to mix with it. Therefore, it stands at attention to be able to form its life, all of divine light, in the soul who freely, freely, freely has given the divine will freedom to let it reign in that soul. Come, divine will, breathe, breathe in my breathing. You have free reign in me. Come, divine will, beat in my heart beating. We do this with our prevening act and our actual acts throughout the day. 527, 10, 7, 1929. Our divine fiat that pronounced itself in the act of creating all things remained in the act always speaking itself to constitute itself act and perennial life of all of creation. It's God that's doing this. That's what God wants. He wants to reign in us. He wants to be the Lord of our life. He says to Louisa, would you become my skin so I can gaze in your gazing and walk in your walking and talk in your talking and listen in your listening? Would you let me reign on earth through, within, through, and for you? And Louisa says, absolutely. What else do you want? That's how we have to be. We learn from Louisa. Now, my daughter, your living in my divine will began with our asking for your human will. Surrender your human will. And you, Louisa, most willingly gave it to me. And when I, God, saw you give me your human will, I, God, felt victorious. And breathing into you, this Ruah of God, I, God, wanted to pronounce, pronounce my omnipotent fiat in the depth of your soul to renew, listen to this, renew the act of creation of Adam in you. He wants to breathe in us, his breath, his Ruah, that Ruah of God. This fiat, I always repeat, Jesus says, in order to give you continuous life from the divine will. Do we believe that? If we do, then we say, breathe in my breathing. Beat in my heart beating. And as, as it is repeated, it preserves you and maintains its divine life in you. That's our God. 527, 10, 12, 19, 29. You are not an intruder or someone who, not occupying any office, does not have any power. But you have been called. Jesus is saying that to us. We have been predestined to live at this time. We have been called to live at this time. We have been given the book of heaven. Do your brothers and sisters have the book of heaven? No, it's not because we're important. It's because they didn't want it. You might have given it to them, but it sits on a shelf getting dust. We're reading it. We're studying it. We understand that God has chosen us to live at this time. Why? To work with Louisa so that the kingdom of God can be established in us on earth as it is in heaven. That's what God is waiting for. You have been called, and in a special way, you have been given the office of making our divine will known. To whom? To your brothers and sisters? I don't think so. To your neighbors, definitely not. To your co-workers, I doubt it. Who are you to make this known to? Yourself. Jesus is saying, I want to be alone with you to teach you. Go to your room, close the door, and pray. Read every day. I want to be alone with you to teach you. I want you to allow me to make this known to you so that you can live it for them who don't want it. It's the same thing when Jesus said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. Everybody went, thank you, but no thank you. This is, this is a little crazy. Then he said to his apostles, will you leave me? And Peter says the right words. Where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. That's what we say with this. You don't want the book of heaven? I want this book of heaven. Not only that, I'm going to prove to Jesus that I want it by going to my room, closing the door, and praying, reading every day. I want to sit down on the couch with Jesus every day. I want him to speak to me every day. And we might not hear him with our ears, but we hear, hear him with our intellect, memory, and will. He begins to teach us. That's what he says to Louisa. He says, making our divine will known and impetrating that our kingdom may continue in the midst of the human family. In the midst of your family. 
It's you. In the midst of your neighbors, it's you. In the midst of your community, it's you. In the midst of creatures, it will spread by you living in it, not telling them, you've got to read this. No, you live it, read it, study it. And, and that life of Jesus reigning in you is looking at your, your family, listening to your family, speaking to your family because you're not there. You're saying, Jesus, gaze in my gazing. Jesus, listen in my listening. Jesus, speak in my speaking. God is there. Everything is changing. The world is changing. Everything's happening. Because time is up, as Our Lady said to Bruno. And it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the reign of Lucifer. His time is over. He was given that hundred years. It's over. The kingdom is coming. Begin to live a life of peace, joy, and happiness. Begin to live this life of heaven. 528, 418, 1930. And this is why my divine will, by subduing you, and that's what he's done with us, by letting yourself being subdued, that's what we do, and has resumed its vivifying virtue in your soul. That's what's happening. God is doing this. This is exactly what St. Louis de Montfort said is going to happen. Calling you into its dwelling and nourishing you. Why? In order to call back in you all of its divine goods that Adam lost. And all your acts, all that you do in the divine will, your rounds, your rounds, upon rounds. Pray your rounds. Learn how to pray the rounds is asking, you're asking continuously for the kingdom upon earth. Come divine will, breathe in my breathing. Are nothing other than the nourishment that gives you and constitutes the right for other creatures, other souls, your family, your friends, your neighbors, to be able to receive again the kingdom of my most holy divine will with the life of all its divine goods for mankind. This is what God, this is your office. Accept it. Begin to live it. Be filled with joy. And when somebody has worries, fears, anxiety, troubles, you say, Thea, God will take care of it. Do you believe it? If you believe it, you'll live it. There'll be nothing else you can say. You know, misery loves company. But when you begin to say fiat, God's going to take care of it. They won't call you. They won't talk to you anymore. Why? They want misery. That's their life. It's not our life anymore. We're living a life of peace, joy, and happiness. Everything is fiat. And, and what God is asking of us is, is what we read here in these volumes. 528, 423, 1930. And after we stretched out the order of the heavens of our divine qualities, our fiat, the vaults of these heavens constitute itself sun of the soul that with its light and its heat reflecting itself in the soul was to grow and to preserve our divine sanctity in the soul, in the creature. And just as our divine qualities point out our supreme being, so do these heavens stretched out in mankind. They point out that man, women, <laughs> man and woman, are our dwelling. That's where God dwells. He says, everything that I've created is a work of God. The only life of God is a, is a child, a human. That's why the devil wants to kill. He hates the life of God through abortion, through euthanasia. Now, it's, no, we don't live like that anymore. We, we say to God, I'm sorry that this is happening to you. I want to repair this. I want to redo this. The life of a child is a life, God says. Everything else, the whales, the everything that they're saving the earth for, everything else is a work of God. But a life of God is a soul, a child. Get ready. The world is not going to be the same anymore. Great things are in store. Those that don't want life God was going to give them what they don't want. They don't want life. God has to give them what they want. We, on the other hand, love life. 
We, on the other hand, want a new beginning for mankind. As I said, that somebody was walking by. I hope they... Is that guy crazy in there? Okay. Who's he talking to? There's no cars in the driveway. Okay. Volume 28. 8, 24, 1930. My divine will lowers itself to everything. Oh, this is so great. And its love is so great that it constitutes its, li its life. It is the life of everything that can serve the soul and reach the point of assuming the form of air to let itself be breathed. Breathe in my breathing. Or food. Eat in my eating to nourish the soul of water, drink in my drinking, to quench her thirst. In sum, there is nothing which the creature makes use of in which my divine will does not run together in order to give itself incessantly to the creature. God is gratuitous. He's constantly giving. When we say, I need some air, he gives us a world filled with air. We need water. He gives us oceans of water. He gives, when we say, whatever we ask, God says, he's generous, gratuitous. He wants us to receive, constantly receive. He is the giver. We receive. Thank you. I praise you. I love you. I adore you with your love, with your praise, with your great, your adoration. 526, 630, 1931. And just as all creatures, as though by nature inherit the seed of original sin, so they inherit Adam's first acts done in our divine will that constitute the beginning and the right of the kingdom of our most holy divine will for mankind, for creatures. It's our right. And God is saying, do you want it? We'll give it back to you if you wish. But you have to live in your nothingness to accept it. I'm not going to mix it with misery. I'm not going to mix it with worry. I'm not going to mix it with fear or anxiety or complaints or negativity. I'm not going to mix it with doubts. I can't, Jesus says. When, it's, when you're empty, I will, give, I will fill you to overflowing. 529, 7-6, 1931. I always feel the need to find the divine will in all things in order to breathe the divine will. To feel the divine will, heart, the heartbeat of light, like blood that circulates in my soul, that constitutes itself primary life of my poor being. And where I am unable to find it, I feel I lack the continuous heartbeat, the breath to, of air, to facilitate the life of the divine will in my soul. That's why she says when she doesn't see Jesus, I can't breathe. You're not here. And I was praying to Jesus to teach me how to find the divine will in all things so that its perennial life would never be lacking in me. Here's something that Jesus is asking us to do, what Louisa did. Pray to God that you can find the divine will in all things, this perennial life that Jesus says that he doesn't want lacking in us. He will show you. He will guide you. He will lead you. As you read, as you study, as you put the book of heaven into practice. Volume 30, 320, 1932. It can be said that the divine will carries everyone and everything within its immense womb of light. So all live in the divine will. With this difference, that the one who, with all her human will, wants to live in the divine will, lets herself be subdued by its dominion and lives as daughter, and as daughter is constituted heiress of the joys of the beatitudes of the goods of her mother in such a way that this divine mother is all intent on embellishing, enriching, and making the daughter rejoice while the one who wants to live of her human will and does not let herself be subdued by the divine will's dominion nor lives in this holy will yet lives not as a daughter but like a stranger and all the joys Convert for that soul into bitterness. That's where most people are. I've told you about my dear friend who uh, complained. She went to daily mass. She prayed the rosary. She wore the scapular. She loved Our Lady. She would spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. But what did she do? She complained and complained and complained and complained and even on her deathbed was complaining. I said, stop it. You're going to be in purgatory for an awful long time for all the complaining you've done. Where's the I praise you and I love you and I adore you and I glorify you? Where's heaven? And she complained 
and she died. God loves her, but she loved her misery more. And I, I'm not saying she's not in heaven. She's going to be a long time in purgatory. She was a good soul, but she could not stop complaining. That's not part of our life. It's not part of our life. Our life is to live heaven on earth, adoring God and loving God and praising God and thanking God and glorifying God and worshiping God with the glory that Jesus has, with the love that Jesus has. We're saying, you, Jesus, pray in my praying. I don't want to pray anymore. I want you. I want to be the vehicle to adore the Father as you adored the Father. That's what the rounds are all about. It's to pray the way Jesus prayed. Adoring God and loving God and praising God and thanking God and glorifying God, the Father. And he's asking us, are you willing to do this? Volume 33, 1126, 1933. So once the soul has understood what the divine will means, and that, that's what we're learning. We're learning what this is about. The soul feels its life flowing, the divine will's life flowing within ourselves. What is that? That's peace, joy, and happiness. That's, that's the feeling of the life of the divine will. She no longer feels the need for anything because why? Possessing our divine will, the soul possesses all possible and all imaginable goods. Everything is ours. You see what God is doing? All that is left for the soul is delirium and the yearnings and the longings for what she wants. She wants my divine will to embrace everyone and everything. Why? Uh, to constitute itself life of everyone and everything. And this is because that soul sees with a divine perspective that my divine will wants it so. And so wants her to live in her nothingness, her littleness. The greatest man born of woman, Jesus said, is John the Baptist. The least in the kingdom, that's Louisa. The littlest in the kingdom, that's Louisa, is greater than he. God has plans. Jesus and Mary, king and queen of, uh, of, of, of the new Jerusalem, if you want to say, the kingdom of God is coming. What does Our Lady say? All her apparitions, get ready for the return of my son. That's what she keeps on saying. Are you ready? What does ready mean? Are you in the state of grace? Are, are you free of worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin? Are you ready? See, I, I always thought years ago when I heard uh, time is coming to an end, I thought, well, I'll, have a, I'll be able to say a good act of contrition. No. When time ends, it's over. It ends. There's no time. You won't be able to get on your knees and confess your sins. You have to do it now. You have to begin to live this life now. Because time, as Our Lady said, an approved apparition to Bruno in Rome, 1947, time has now come to an end. Look at, look at all that's being t told to us. We got to get ready, especially what I find in, in the book of heaven. As you read the book of heaven, everything begins to make sense. As you read the book of heaven, read, study, put this into practice. Volume 33, 5, 6, 1934. Hear then redemption. The head wants to heal the members and bind them by dints of pain and of death so that they may avail themselves of the virtues of the head. Okay, so Jesus says this. Jesus wants to heal us and bind us, you know, soothe our wounds by pain and of death. Pain of what? Not worrying anymore. I trust you. That when, when you begin to worry, you're saying to God, this is the pain. I don't trust you. When... When, when you're fearful, you're saying to God, I don't trust you. So he says, I want to bind you with dints of pain. Here's the situation. What are you going to do about it? Scream, yell, you know, uh, what are we going to do? Oh, my God, what's it? No, it's Jesus, I trust in you. 
by these pains and of death, we say to God, you're my Savior, you're my Lord. I trust in you. I believe in you. I hope in you. I have confidence in you. We're only here for a short time. 70, they say, 80 if you're strong. That's it. And I've seen people in their 90s going, you know, I don't know why I'm sick. I'm going, you know, it's we're here for just a short period of time. Get ready. Get ready for the kingdom. We're not, this is a bus station. Let's get on the bus. Let's get back. Let's get back to where we belong. That's what Jesus is saying too. There's a short period of time to get ready. And uh, make it a good act of contrition is, is a good way to begin every night. Pray every night a good act of contrition in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. Begin to learn how to do that. When you wake up in the morning, the very first thing before you even open your eyes, I want to repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. I want the, the face of the earth to be renewed. I want everything to please you, God. I want every thought, every word that I have ever thought said and done to be repaired, to, to honor you, to praise you, to glorify you, to truly love you. I want to please you in everything that I thought said and did, did ever in my life. As you begin this, this is what Jesus says. The pains that are around you, the death that is around you, 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 you are repairing and redoing. Why? So that you can be healed. The world can be healed. Somebody's got to do it, Jesus said. He's done it on the cross. Our Lady's done it at the foot of the cross. Louisa did it without eating, drinking, or sleeping for 64, 70 years. 64 or 70 years. So our God is, is asking us, uh, are you willing to give up the misery so that you can believe, begin to live a life of joy? He says, to make themselves available to receive the virtues of God. The mother wants to reunite with the children. She makes herself known to constitute her children heirs of what she possesses. Everyone is suffering, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. All of us are suffering. What do we do with our suffering? Do we drag our cross behind us? Look what I've got to go through again. Or are we embracing the cross as Jesus embraced his cross? Are we saying, this is, our cross is our life. Are we saying to Jesus, this is the life you've given me. Thank you. This is what you want me to go through. Thank you. I adore you. I love you. I praise you. I thank you. I glorify you. As we enter into the divine will, everything becomes peaceful, joyful, and happy. It is a wonder then that if descending from heaven to earth, our primary purpose in our divine mind was to constitute the kingdom of our divine will in the midst of the human family. That's what's coming. Jesus and Mary came to earth to, our Lord redeemed us, our lady co-redeemed, but he says the whole reason for being redeemed is to sanctify us. He says it took 2,000 years for the church to be at the point where we can be sanctified. How do we know this? Because Louisa was born. Because of Louisa, the gift was given to her, and because it was given to her, and she wrote everything down that Jesus said, it's not her writings, it's Jesus' writings. Now Jesus says, read it and watch what I will do. Study it and watch what I will do. A new beginning is coming. Uh, volume 33, 8, 5, 1934. Our adorable majesty had established to constitute man, Adam, king of all creation, giving Adam dominion over everything, making Adam the master of all art of works. But in order for Adam to be called the, a true king with facts and not just words, Adam was to possess within himself everything that we, triune God, had spread out in all of creation. The rounds help us understand that everything in creation is ours. Everything is an I love you to us. And God says, breathe that in with your ears, your eyes, your nose. Possess it and then thank him with giving it back to him. It's, it's like we're being recreated to give back to God. God in us is doing that. We become that vehicle where we breathe it in and breathe it back to God. And that's what he's saying. He says, everything that Adam possessed 
within himself, uh, everything is that we try and God to spread out in all of creation. So he's asking us to possess the universe. Possess everything. Thank you, Jesus. You gave me that. When you walk on the beach and you, you pick up a, a shell on the beach, you go, wow, this is really amazing. God knew you were going to do that. He placed it there. Everything in creation is an I love you to us. And nobody thanks him. Nobody adores him. Nobody worships him. They all go around, I was going to say something, they all go around doing what they want and not, and they're ignoring God. It's not, that's not ours anymore. We're praising him and loving him and glorifying him, letting Jesus praise and love and glorify the Father within us. He says, would you be my skin so that I can adore the Father in your name, within and through and for you? And we say, yes, Lord. Vine 34, 7, 12, 19, 37. If the soul loves my fiat, the ways of love pours upon her whole being, invests her mo innermost fibers, and while pouring upon her, overwhelming the soul completely in love, it constitutes itself queen and converts its love in the soul into her very nature. But so much that the soul shall feel her breath, her heartbeat, her motion, her step, the whole of her being as incapable that she shall feel the, her, excuse me, incapable of doing nothing other than love. You breathe this I love you. Your heart beats with the I love you. You walk with the I love you. Everything becomes, we enter into this divine I love you of God. That's what God's waiting for. This wave of love rises up to heaven without ceasing to rain down upon the soul. The storms of our storms her creator. I you know, I adore you, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, I bless you. It's just it's just magnificent. Loving him always, because when a good converts into one's nature, one feels the need to repeat the good received as an act that constitutes her life. This law, see, the divine will is love. It's love, life, and light. You enter into this love of God, this ocean of love, this, this sea of love. He's saying, I want you to enter into this and never leave. It's infinite. I want you to be in the center of this love and never leave. Can you imagine what that is like? The love of God, possessing the love of God for all eternity. Jesus says, I want you to begin to live this life now. I, I want you to begin to live this life now. 527, 1027, 1929. Until mankind surrenders his human will and mind, mind cannot cast its principle of life in the human will. The fusion of the one, uh, of one with the other cannot take place. See, God wants this fusion. Fusion is welding two pieces of metal together. He says, I want this to take place. The creature shall always be a creature without the divine likeness, without the divine life of her God in the depth of her soul. And then Jesus says this, you have to understand this. Only my divine fiat can form that life. Do you want it? And we say, yes, Lord, I want it. He says, good, let me do this. Let me accomplish this in you. Get out of my way. He says that to Luis all the time. You know, let me do this. <laughs> he's, he's got plans. It's going to happen. Our Lady says, get ready. The, the time has now come to an end. Everything's ready. The kingdom is at hand. That was 2,000 years ago. The kingdom is here now for those who want it. And it doesn't mean that you die. It means you begin to live a life of peace, joy, and happiness. That's the true life of Jesus. That's the true life of Mary. Volume 35, 10, 3, 1937. As principle of each of their acts, we triune God, listen to this, place the life of our fiat as the foundation and our divine love as the nourishment for the act. An eye blink, a step, a breath. It's the foundation and the, our love is the nourishment for that act because we try on God do nothing nor can we try on God give anything if it does not have our divine will as principle and our divine love 
as food and provision. He's feeding us with the first bread. See, this is the bread that Adam on, Adam ate. Jesus tells Louisa, why do you receive Holy Communion for that 15 minutes to adore him, love him, praise him after receiving Holy Communion? Jesus says, to get you ready for the perennial communion with God. That's to walk and talk with God in the cool of the evening as Adam did. That's what's coming. We're going back to where we were before the fall. That's what Jesus keeps on telling. Louisa, don't you understand? We, we, what's coming is the kingdom. Are you ready to live in it? I want you to have the greatest place in the kingdom. Embrace what I tell you. And again, we can receive it 30, 60, or 100 fold. Whatever we want, we're going to get. But we have to prove to Jesus that we want this. 536, 519, 1938. I can say that my most holy divine will puts an end to the evils of mankind. Do you believe that? Since uh, the divine will is the principle and life of every good. The human will without my divine will is the source of all evils. That's the human misery. And the total ruin of the poor soul. So Jesus is saying to us, would you be willing to say yes? Would you be willing to give your fiat so that the kingdom can be established? That's what God is asking. This, these 36 volumes are magnificent. And as you read them, as you study them, as you put them into practice, everything changes. Your life becomes joy-filled, peaceful, and happy. It's a new beginning for mankind. It's a new beginning for us. And that, that's what God is waiting for. He's waiting for us to say, I believe you. That's what Peter said today in the Sacred Scriptures. Lord, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We will eat your flesh. We will drink your blood. They don't want it. That's okay. We will do it for them. And it's the same thing with the divine will. We want this kingdom reigning in us on earth as it is in heaven. In this dust. In this dust. May your kingdom reign on earth as it is in heaven. And when we say yes to this, God says, good. Would you do it for them? I want them in the kingdom as well. Would you do it for them? Would you stand in the breach for them as Moses stood in the breach for the Israelites? Would you stand in the breach for all of mankind, past, present, and future? Would you be willing to do that for them? And our response is, definitely. I don't want anybody to miss this. I don't want anybody to not have this great gift. And if I have to do it for them, so be it. That's what God is asking. Can you give your fiat so that the kingdom can be established on earth as it is in heaven? So we'll end there with a prayer and the blessing of the relic of the true cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, and that we pray that we're healed spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and we pray that this prayer becomes God's command. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, and we'll have the next talk on uh, June 6th, same time, same station. My God, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me. Do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.